as there was so much gunk and junk in this engine and gunge and all sorts of stuff, uh, I'm going to strip it all down. I'm going to take everything to bits, clean it, paint it wherever possible, and then put it back together again. It's a long job, but because it's been contaminated with bits of bearing all over the place, I don't think I've got much of a choice really. Um, so what I'm going to do first of all is something very unusual. I'm going to power wash it off first, even in the inside. Now it's my shop's heated, uh, so I haven't got much worry about it drying out or pockets of water. But I want to paint this block and make sure it's all nice and get rid of all this dirt and stuff like this. And it's really filthy to dis uh, dismantle, so I'm going to take it to bits. But one of the most important things I'm going to clean out. There's two bungs. Let's see if we can see it down here. There's a screw here and a screw here. And likewise, at the back, there's a hole here for the screw. Oh, wait a minute, I've got to get the back out of here. mind of its own look. Uh, there's a bung there and there's a bung down here. Wait a minute, let's see where we are. There we go. So there's a bung here and a bung down there. Those are the oilways. So I'm going to power wash those out with a steam cleaner. I'm going to steam clean all the oil passages out first. Now you're going to say, oh, don't do that because it'll get rusty, but it guaranteed it won't. But once, it's, once I've got the thick and the residue out, then it can go through the parts washer. The problem is, there's so much gunk and junk on there, I can't really lift that all into the parts washer at the same time and it'll block my parts washer up. So we'll get rid of the thick and the bits of gasket. So we're going to scrape all the, the, the thick bits of gasket off first and uh, get it ready for stripping down. And then I'll sort of go around you bits by bits how we're going to do that. So uh, it could be interesting. Let's stick around and see what happens. So there we are, straight off the steam cleaner. Uh, and it's nice and hot. So I'm going to blow that down with the airline now, get the residual water off, and a lot of water will drop out. But it's going to be nice to work on once we, uh, well, once we get around to it, and then we'll clean, e clean each part individually in the parts washer. Now these are here are the bungs that you've got to take out. There's a little flat blade, there's a slot in there for a flat blade screwdriver, but you probably can't see very well, but there's they get, dimple, they get punched over with a centre punch to stop them falling out. And this is the back one. And you can see it's got rather a, a shonky copper washer on. So we're going to replace all this. We're even going to replace these as well because I'm not really sure about it. So I'm going to leave that to dry, drip dry, and uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. So now this engine's nice and dry, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to strip it down all the ancillaries off first and then we're going to do the head now it, get into the practice if you're not familiar with how things go back together again so here's a couple of little tricks for you guys who's just beginning get in the habit of putting the nuts or the bolts back into the same place where you took them off for example if you're going to take off this uh, breather put the bolt back into the hole. Two things. First of all, you know where the bolt is and you know it's a specific bolt for that job. The second thing, which is really important, it stops any dirt, debris, oil, water getting back into that hole. So it does two purposes and it does work. And like I say, there's an awful lot of bolts on here that look the same but are not quite the same. So there's something to look forward to. So, like I say, we're going to get onto that. What do we put our nuts and bolts in that we can't put back in the holes, for example? Well, we're going to take all the push rods out and the, the, the tappets and things like this. And the old days, we used to put them into egg boxes. Yep, it's just a simple old egg box. You could put all your bits in here and then write on here what they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever it is, you know. Or if you've got two egg boxes, you could put for all the exhaust in one and all the inlets in the other. It's up to you, but you can put the top on and keep that relatively safe. But, moving fast forward into the 18th century, we've now got Ziploc bags, and these are cheap as chips. 
and <clears throat> you can write on them what they actually are, provided you don't get them too greasy. But they will uh, fasten up, so if you're taking all the tappets out, or, or if you're taking all the retainers out for the um, injectors, for example, you can put them in a bag, write down on there what they actually are, and then you can lose them all in the same bag by throwing them away somewhere, and then buying new ones. So that's what we're gonna do, step by step. First of all, all the ancillary is off the outside. This bit, uh, all this cover, that's all coming off, so stick around. And I'm gonna use my impact gun and things like that to take these off because, you know, just to, just to speed things up a bit. But we're gonna look and inspect things as we're going along to see if we're on the right track. And you can see I inadvertently spin pulleys that don't even look at them, just to see what they sound like, and that's looking good. And it'll give them a little shake and see if there's any loose in here. But one thing I did notice, you know, like, you, you do, when you do these things all the time, you sort of, you, you miss, well, you don't miss things up, but you, you, you just do them by, um, I don't know, what the hell is it? We stick around, I don't know. But, force of habit, that's what I was thinking about. Turn the hose, I don't know if you can see down here. <laughs> you see there, I can turn that hose that's supposed to be crimped onto here. Well, there's an oil leak in, in its making. See, this one's good. That one won't turn. Um, see, but it, but it turns here. See? And that one doesn't turn there. Bugger, eh? We're going to have to replace those hoses. Because you can't really crimp them back on again. And to tell you the truth, they're so cheap, they're not worth an oil leak. So, I'm an instruct under instructions to replace whatever needs to be done. So again, we could have put that back together and found there was a loose hose on there. Uh, you know, do it now, do it once, do it right, and it's done. So, let's get on with it. One of the first little jobs we're gonna do, we're gonna take the wiring off the alternator. Uh, this is the big type of alternator, so it's held on by uh, an eight millimeter socket, uh, eight millimeter nut, and a 10 millimeter. Then we're gonna take the, the pivot bolt out, and the, the, uh, the bolt that holds it onto the cover here. Then we can get that out of the way. Whilst we've got our little power gun out, we're gonna take off these bolts here, 10 millimeters. Don't lose them, put them back into the housing because those are little stubby uh, um, eight millimeter threaded bolts and they do get lost, so don't lose those. And then we're gonna take this 15 millimeter off here and get rid of this pulley. So like I said, taking nuts and bolts off, that's boring, but I'm just gonna show you now what to do. So with those little bits and pieces off and out of the way, the next thing is we're gonna take this housing off here that holds the water pump. Again, while we're here, I think we'll put a water pump on. I don't put things on just for the sake of doing it, it's just that while we're here, it's easy. Now, what I was gonna to say to you was this. This little bolt in here, this little nut in here, it's kind of tricky to get at, so what you need is a thin wall socket. Now I know that this is a multi-spline one, but that's all I've got, but it does fit in the hole. If you try to use an impact socket or something like that, it won't go in. So, we've got to take this off here, these three bolts are here, and then two bolts down at the bottom. One's a nut and bolt, this one's a nut and bolt, this one's a stud. Um, it looks like these have been changed before because they should be 10 mil, but they're 13s. So we'll get those off, then that bit's off, then we can move on to something more interesting. If you've noticed, I left the injector pump actually on the car, on the engine, while I took the front cover off, because I wasn't really sure what was wrong with it. Um, so what we've got to do now is take the pipes off. They're a 17 millimeter nut, taking these off from here, and off the top of the injectors. Now, when you take those off, really important to put some plastic plugs on. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the hose off here. This is, I think this is 12 millimeter, the, the pipe that goes to your turbo. And then there's two god awful tricky bolts that's in the back of the pump that holds it on. Um, they're not too bad to get through this way because I can put an extension. Then, and then we can pull the pump off, put it in a plastic bag, and keep it clean. Most important. Same with the injectors. The injectors are going to go into plastic bags. Um, and then, 
we can get into that. Next thing is we can take the, the pump off, the vacuum pump, the fuel pump and this cover off. With the injector pump off we can notice something else because this is, must be an earlier engine. Um, the bracket on here was reinforced on later engines, it had a sort of like a washer and a slip ring put in here because I think they knew there was something wrong with the, uh, the front covers were twisting and bending and this is the only thing that supported the back of the pump so it was, the pump was tending to twist towards the front with the belt. Uh, getting all the rest of the stuff off is quite easy and straightforward. Um, lots of it is just 10 millimeter sockets to get all these bits and pieces off. 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 19 millimeter. Uh, there's a 10 millimeter bracket on this pipe here. We'll probably do that later. And these, I think, are 13 millimeter. So we're going to take all that unit off. Just whiz them all off. You can't. You know, the funniest thing is when you're taking engines to bits. It's quite easy. It's putting them back together again. That's the tricky bit. So let's get all this lot off. Now I'm not taking off these bolts off the cover, off the uh, um, fans. Uh, what the hell is it called? An air cleaner. That's it. I'll get my mind together shortly. I'm not going to take this off quite yet until I uh, slacken off the head bolts. Uh, so the next thing, once this is off, then we're going to take the bolt out of here for the uh, breather, that's 8mm and pff, that's, about, uh, that's about this side taken care of. We've got to take the top hose off here, this hose is good um, again, it's not crimped or perished, I think we'll put one of those on once before once we've got that done, this side's clear, then we can work on the other side just before I start to strip the manifolds off the other side of the engine, I just want to take show you a little bit about this bracket for the injector pump. Looks quite innocent and there's nothing really wrong with it except it's an old design. You can see here there's some slots, there's two slots. Well obviously when this is mounted on the engine like, like so, you can allow the, the pump to move in and out a little bit. Well that's not good, it wants to move backwards and forwards if anything. So these slots are no good. The, the real ones, the new updated ones, got a sliding bush in it a lot better. So anyway, let's get back to this and I'll show you what we're going to do here. I'm going to take the manifold off. Now, manifold off and bottom engine mount dipstick. Kind of straightforward, nothing really spectacular. 10mm, uh, 10mm and a 13mm at the bottom. You don't have to take the 13 mils off completely, just back them off and then this will slide out the way. Uh, this nut here at the bottom, if any of you have played around with changing turbos and things like this, it can be a bugger. Uh, what happens is there's a little nut behind it, like a, an adapter that goes between the block. It's got two threads on, it's got two male threads on. And usually what happens is it turns out of the block rather than undoing this nut. That's a lot of fun. So what you've got to try and find somehow is a little slim spanner to fit under there and to take it off. Now a good top tip of mine is to take the dipstick out first because you've got to take it out anyway and then you can get that off. Then you've got your oil feed pipe at the, at the back, this one here, that comes off, you don't need to take it off there, as you, well you know you need to take it off there to get to the uh, bolts in there but that has to come up loose off here. Um, like I say engine mount manifolds and then it's just 15 millimeters uh, sockets to take off the manifold, so that should be quite straightforward. And let's get that done before dinner because I'm hungry. Well, it seems typical what I was mentioning earlier that this nut is tight. Uh, it's a 27 millimeter nut, but the adapter is turning. But the problem is, it's really, really slim. You can't really get a big, chunky spanner in like that, it won't go in. So I'm going to get, uh, it's 27 millimeter. I think I'm going to have to sacrifice an old spanner and cut it to make, make it fit. If I haven't got anything, then I'll have to cut something out of a bit of metal um, to do. I, you know, sometimes I have problems with them, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But you, you just can't get in to turn, you know, to hold that nut because this spanner is so thick it's touching the uh, nut that you want to take off. 
Bit of a bad design really, if, it, if they were thinking about it, it could have made the nut just that bit bigger and we would have been fine. Come on up. That's Land Rover. So I made myself a spanner. This was a 7 8 key uh, and I just opened it out to 27mm, made it a little bit thinner, but look at this, it's like a dream. Don't be afraid of cutting spanners up. And you see how easy that was then? That's all it took. <laughs> Life's like that sometimes, isn't it? But you see, the thing is, if you start reefing on this nut and it all turns, you'll, you'll twist this pipe and it's like a Teflon pipe inside with a stainless steel braiding on and when that goes, well, it's ruined because it won't spring back. It's not like it's rubber or anything like that. So that's off. Um, got that pipe off there. Manifold off. Good to go. So the next thing we're going to do, we've got the caps on top of the injectors just to keep them clean. And now we need an 11mm spanner and take off the spill return. I've already loosened these off. Generally speaking, when we take these off, for some strange reason, it always seems to happen that the little washer keeps the banjo bolt in place. Strange that, isn't it? I've never seen them sort of come out. This is why we put <coughs> spill dry underneath there, just to get the last remnants of this diesel out. Oh, call me a liar, there we go, there's one falling out already. So what we're going to do, is put these back in the holes, wherever possible. That will keep the dirt out. The ones that are coming out, If they are coming out, like those, I might as well take all four out. I've got some little uh, plugs there, but I think all these bolts are actually going to disappear. Well, except for one. So for the one that's remaining, we'll put a little plug in there, but we'll keep the bolts in. Now the next thing, The next thing we're going to do is pull the injectors out, so there's, these are little 13mm bolts on there and then we're going to mark up the injectors as we take them off with a sharpie, one, two, three, four, and put them in a the bag. With the injectors out we can now take out the glow plugs. Now you could take off the cylinder head, just lift it off, see we don't really need to take them off, you know, to strip the engine down. But the problem is that the injectors protrude out the head and so do the um, glow plugs. So we don't want to damage them, so it's just as easy to take them out and put them into a bag. Now, the bolt sizes on these vary between 7 and 8 millimeter for the exterior. Those are 7, but the actual plugs themselves are 10. So that's quite an easy thing to do. Hold on a minute, let me keep in that. So by holding on to the wire, we can pull, pull the wire, pull, pull against the tension of the wire when, when you're turning, and it will uh, stop them from stop them from breaking. We don't want the bolts to uh, snap. That one's already off because we took the main lead off. So I'm going to take those off and take the glow plugs out. Now these have been out before, so I have. Uh, you know, this head's only about six months old, sadly, you know, because uh, the old one was damaged. So at least we know that we don't have to play around with this too much. But glow plugs can be a bugger to get out because they get carboned up around the uh, tip. Now if they have got, if they're difficult to get out, leave them in the head and soak them. I've just dropped that nut into the spill dry, that's going to be fun. So I'm going to get a magnet to get it out. What a work, oh, couldn't be, oh, I can see it. Let me get that out and I'll get these uh, glow plugs out. <clears throat> with, the, um, with the glow plugs out, now we're going to take off the rocker cover. They're uh, 13 millimeter. What you do is start at the middle. 
See, they're not all, they don't have to be monster tight, these covers. Everybody rips them down and then warps the cover. Just do it evenly. And then we can start to get to the valve. So what we're doing now, we're taking the rocker shaft off, we're just progressively taking those 13 mils off. And also, we need a 10 mil to get the middle ones off. I think that's 10. Yep, that's it. Again, just do it progressively. Just even, even Stevens, just to undo them nice and even. Then we'll take it out and we'll, I'm going to put this straight in the parts washer. A little tip I learned very early on when doing engines, and some people don't do this, they take the push rods out and just throw them in a box. But I like to keep them in the positions where everything's sort of jived and worn together. We're going to take the push rods out and we're going to push them, we've got a piece of cardboard here, which is actually an old gasket uh, support piece of cardboard and uh, we're going to push them through, we've made eight, eight holes in and they're going to go through there, so they go back into the right place again and you see I, point, I, I cut a, a point so that points towards the front of the engine now we are going to, when we put this back together again we're going to, once it's all clean I'm going to do a video of um, what to look for and we're going to test these, we're going to test just about everything but we're not going to do the head because we've already done the head and well this was a new head so there's no need to. So that's those out. There we go, that's them out. Next thing I'm going to put the bolts back in the holes again. Again so we don't lose them. And the next thing is something that's usually overlooked by amateurs and they always so I'll take the heads off and forget that the, on the top of the valves there's these little caps. So again we're going to get a little, um, <clears throat> a little bag and put all these caps in. These don't really matter which position these go in, they're alright, but there's eight of them. One for each valve. And after that we sort of get into a position where we can uh, undo the bolts for the head. And this is the reason why I didn't take off the um, support for the uh, air cleaners bracket because um, oh, that one's stuck on there. because um, we didn't we want to take the bolts off in a pattern not just sort of random. Now I've lost my screwdriver let me go and have a look for that. When we take the head bolts off I'm just going to use impact gun because it's we're going to use the bolts again so it doesn't really matter but what really does matter is taking the heads off in the opposite way that you tighten it down. When we tighten it down we started in the middle and worked progressively outwards with a pattern but this time we're going to start off on the bolt we finished on and work in a crisscross pattern and take it off nice and evenly. So in the middle it's going to be the last bolt so we take out. So. <coughs> Let me get on with it. I put the bolts in a bag. Uh, these have been used just once, but to be honest, I bought a new set of bolts to go with it. Uh, just to be sure. So, there we go, head off. How easy is that? nice inside. Pity about that gasket, it's only been used once, it's only been used a few thousand miles. Oh. Now, the next thing is going to take the cam out. Where are you? It's really awkward working backwards, I'll never get used to that. Now what we do to take the camshaft out, first of all we've got to take the lifters out of here. 
these are uh, the, on the rollers and this is why we need quite a few bags because we're going to put them in in order uh, in bags we're going to get our old sharpie out right on the bag which one it is put it in the bag we're going to put it in dirty and oily because we don't know when we're going to put this back together again so I like to wash them all off so just before we put it all back together and the reason for that is that the, the excess oil just keeps the rust off if we did degrease it and things like that and then we think oh we can't put this back for another week then it can sort of get rusty so we don't want that so the first thing we're going to do is take off these 13 millimeter nuts off here and then we're going to get try and get these out using a little screwdriver so let me get ready for that so we're taking off the uh, taking out the bolt that holds the uh, lifter in if you notice the the lifter's got a little pin which locates into the actual lifter itself now using a little screwdriver like a Phillips screwdriver if you can grab hold of it and pull it up it's a bit tricky but there's the tube here's the piece that goes inside and try and keep them together and you probably heard there the roller fell out and it's always going to fall out this is where we need a magnet put it in the hole bring it up done so I'm going to put that into its relevant place in here put the bolt through the hole if it will and then put it into bag number one and we're going to do that for all of these just keep them all together all right. seems a bit boring and it usually is just a little tip, <laughs> if you need to change the camshaft for any bizarre reason and you don't want to take the head off or anything like that well you can do it by taking the engine out flip it upside down, take the push rod, take the rocker shaft off and the push rods and all those little rollers here where are you? here will fall to the bottom and then you can pull your cam out you don't even have to change it, how, how simple is that? So, I'm going to get all the rest of these out and then we'll come back and we'll get ready to pull the cab out. To get the cam out, it's quite easy. We've got to just take these two bolts off this keeper plate here. And they should come out not too bad. Like that. Unscrew those. What we're going to do when we take the cam out, we're going to put the, this plate in, back in, in the right position. If you see what I mean, I'll just show you. There'll be a place where it wears. And it's not marked front or back, but you can put it in either way around, it doesn't really matter. So that's the back, this is the front. So once we take the cam out, I'm going to just put that back in. And it shouldn't take much to get that cam out actually. So here it goes. You can see it's all filthy because we wouldn't be being power washing it. But it is kind of tricky to keep straight. Now once this is washed off we'll have a look at the uh, all the bushings inside and see if they're worn. Um, replacing the cam bushings are quite tricky so hopefully we, we don't have to do that. So I'm going to put this plate back on here, put this cam in the parts washer and then we're going to take the pistons out. So once we've got the camshaft out we can take the pistons out. What I'm doing at the moment is just before I take it to bits I'll just check the, the little ends and see if they feel nice, they feel really good. And I've noticed that the cylinders on this motor were absolutely perfect because I've got a suspicion it's been rebored. So what we're going to do is just tap down the pistons and there, when we push them out, put your hand at the bottom careful not to scratch the bores we can see all the gunge and stuff that's come down the sides of the pistons look 
There's no blowback. But there's gunge everywhere. Man, look at all this here, all burnt on here, look. Look at it. Funny enough, the, the rods look the, the rods look good, but uh, I don't know where that why it being dirty oil or what. Anyway. I can't see any marks on the piston. Not sure if it I think it might warrant a set of rings, you know. I hope I can get those in order for tomorrow. But it did have a compression test uh, when I did before I did the head, so there was nothing to suspect it was um, low compression. But you never know with these things. You never know if there's a. ring or something like that. Again, gunge. I think that's what's blocked the bloody holes up in the crank, you know. I think they've just got gunged up. But it's awful strange why it's nice and clean at the bottom and no gunge at the top. Um, it doesn't matter too much, but I know which way these go around because they're stamped on the caps two and two and they must match up together. Once all these are out, I've got the I've got the jets to take out. I'll show you how we do that. Look at that! All of them are all gunchy. Look, look at the state of that. I've never seen anything like it. Usually, I mean, I clean these up with a steam cleaner. You can see they come up nice, but every one's all gobbered up. And yeah, that's strange how the rings have come round. Look at that. <laughs> They've moved round in the bars, look. <laughs> well, they're never. Let me have a look at the other ones. We're, all, we're almost there. So the next thing to do, if you can see, let's move this a bit further forward without knocking you down. I don't know if you can see down in here. I don't know if you can see, can you? There's some jets at the bottom. So you can turn this around a bit. Maybe you can see them now. Mm, maybe not. Let's <laughs> work with the camera is kind of difficult. It's like working with a child down here. Down here, <laughs> there's some jets, and they're the they're the cooling jets to spray oil uh, underneath the pistons. So I'm just wondering whether this has got really bad gummy oil in it, but I don't know why. You know, it might have had some just cheap oil in it sometime. I don't know. It's not been changed often enough, but it is kind of gungy. So what we're going to do now. Once the jets are out, once the jets are out, we're going to clean all this lot up uh, and then get all the existing gasket material off and we'll go and inspect everything. Now I'm looking at these pistons, I need to find out what size they are. Uh, I might be tempted to put a set of rings in them. They, they, they drop out the bars really, really easy. So we'll wait and see. All right. So. That's our stripping engine down. Now I will follow this up by once it's all cleaned, we'll go through things bit by bit and inspect everything. All right, so we'll talk to you later. Bye bye.